Hey guys, it's Jim here, and welcome back to another episode of Would I Rebuy This Guitar? And today's guitar was a pretty special one. And that is my Made in Japan Fender MG65 Mustang. <laughs> first decided I wanted a Fender Mustang. It was a little hard to find them in the shops. They weren't in mainline production from the Mexican factory and the only American ones that were being made were the specials. So they had two humbuckers and a hardtail bridge and they never really kind of tickled my fancy. I wanted something a little more vintage. And I remember looking around on Reverb even all those years ago and I saw this guitar come up and I thought the price was way too low. I think it was like $500 and it was mint. It's a Japanese made in Japan and it's not sonic blue, it's just the Mustang blue. It had the white pickup covers on it. I thought it was really classy. I did a little more homework into it. It was right down the street. It was at a shop called Top 40 Guitars in Santee, California, about 15 minutes away. So I took a bunch of money with me. I drove out to Santee, made sure that everything was legit with the guitar. It was, and no questions asked, I took it home. And just as a sidebar here, when I had first decided I wanted an offset guitar and I was shopping for the Jazzmaster, a Jaguar, or potentially a Mustang, I chose the Jazzmaster because it was the one that I thought looked the best. I hadn't played any of them prior to doing that. And this was my first time playing a short scale Fender when I did get this Mustang. And within five minutes, it made me question my initial decision to buy the Jazzmaster because to me, with the shorter scale length of the Jag and the Mustang, it felt so much more comfortable. And when you play a Jazzmaster, it feels like the neck, obviously it's an inch and a half longer, but even so, um, just the way the body is laid out and the bigness of the body, the neck, feels further away from you than pretty much any guitar I have, honestly. The only guitar that I've played where the neck felt similarly distant would be my friend's uh, 335 Gibson, which again, it's a very, very, very slight difference, but it's something that you do notice. But when I was playing this Mustang, I fell in love with it, and I liked it better than the Jazzmaster pretty much straight away. It was so light. It was so easy to play, it didn't fret out, it was just, it was a dream. And it was unlike any other guitar, and I still stand by, I say this in every time I bring up Mustangs, this guitar, because of the switching and because of the unique sounds, I'll always play different stuff on it. At the time, I had an El Capistan, and what was the other pedal I had? A Flint, two Strymon pedals, and that was it. I had two pedals for my kind of modulation and you know effects and when I would play the Mustang stuff that I would never normally play from any other guitar would just naturally come out of me and this would grow to be a normal kind of tendency and I do get a lot of Mustangs and as you see I think on just even the history of this channel I think there's been four or five in the span of like eight months and every single one makes me play a little bit more different than any other guitar and I still haven't found the right one yet to have a permanent one, but they really, they do it for me. And I think it's worth noting that I think because I paid so little for this guitar, and at the time, I think it was probably the cheapest guitar I had, I brought that guitar out with me a lot. I would bring it out to play, I would bring it out to go and hang out by the pool. Um, it was just kind of the workhorse guitar. and. It would always sit out and you know I, I have guitars now even they sit kind of in their stands in like the big rack stands or in the wall stands and stuff like that the Mustang was a guitar I always left right next to the amp and this was I don't know I did it really subconsciously I always felt so comfortable playing it and I liked being able to go to that guitar it just felt so nice and it was so reliable as far as staying in tune and really trying pretty much doing anything I would need it to do genre wise now the only cons I had for this guitar are the same I have for all Mustangs. And I think it's the one thing 
that I don't know if, if, if I'm comparing it with a Jag, it might be enough for me to, to pick a Jag over it if you held a gun to my head, and that's the Trem system. I know that you can get the Mustang Vibrato to be pretty reliable, but just the feel of it, because I, you know, I was playing the Jazzmaster for all those years, um, I prefer that bridge infinitely more than the one on the Mustang. And that's just one of those things. And when I do get Mustangs in, even if it doesn't come with the tremolo arm or it does come with the tremolo arm, I very rarely actually screw the thing in when I'm playing it. It's just, it's not my cup of tea. And the other thing was, I didn't care for the switching system on it. And that's just Mustangs in general, but I think I'm gonna chalk most of that up to the fact that I never really took the time to understand it. I'm stubborn, I'm a guy, I'm a guitar player. And I would often think I had a, a good grasp of what's going on with the switches and how they worked in relation to each other, but I didn't up until about oh, maybe a year and a half ago. So that was something I didn't love at the time, but looking back now and now that I really understand it, you know, I did five minutes worth of research to really figure it out. I don't think I would say that that would be a negative, just something that if you're considering buying a Fender Mustang, just look it up look it up you'll have a lot easier time and you won't be as frustrated accidentally getting sounds that you might not be intentionally going for and if you're not familiar with mustangs and you might see a lot of japanese ones come up for sale you might wonder what's the difference between an mg65 an mg69 and an mg73 outside of finishes headstocks and racing stripes the 65 is just straight up there's no tummy cut there's no bevel on the top of it it's just a straight piece of wood and it's vintage correct. The 69 has the bevels a little bit and the tummy cut, and the 73 has the racing straight and the bevels and the, and the tummy cut. So it's all about what you like. If you want the more truly original design, the 65 is good. I think I like, I like the, the creature comforts that come on the 73 and the 69, but it, there's something kind of natural and raw and more vintage feeling in your hands even when you're playing the original MG65. But would I rebuy this guitar? No, I wouldn't. Two reasons. First of all, there are two Fender Mustangs I desperately want. I want this guitar's original version. I want a 1965 L series Fender Mustang in the blue or all original, that's what I want. And then I do want, and the reason I'm making this video is because this guitar is on my mind, I want a Competition Orange MG73. That, if I could get the Japanese one, I'd be totally cool with that because a guitar like that too, that's gonna appreciate in value anyways. And it'd be kind of nice to have something, you know, really uncommon in the United States here. Be one of the only people that has it. I'll leave you with this. If you've never gotten a sit and play with a Mustang or Jag, because those switchings are, are very, very unique, more so complicated than the Jazz Master. I would highly, highly recommend you do. And go a little bit unconventional with it. Don't just go right to the neck pickup straight up, the bridge pickup straight up, the in-between straight up. Really mess with the knobs because the sounds that you can get out of these, it's just, they're truly one of a kind. And they might not always be useful in the context of every song, but it can be, the difference between you coming up with something really creative and a nice layering part on top of a song you already have or kind of like a motif to start a new sound on top and uh, i just i love them I, I find myself out of all the fenders i think the telecaster and the strat they're workhorses uh, i think the jazz master is my kind of like niche guitar i'm never going to sell that guitar because of you know sentimental reasons and stuff like that but as far as when i want real creativity to come out the mustang and the jag for me, they're the ticket. But that's where I'm gonna end it for you guys. And while I'm thinking about Mustangs, uh, yeah, I put up a few guitars for sale. I'm gonna make a serious effort here to get one of those orange ones. So yeah, cat's out of the bag. But if you like what I'm doing, please leave me a like on the channel. I really do appreciate that. Subscribe if you haven't already. And other than that, I will see you tomorrow for a new week of new videos. Take it easy, you guys.